The subject tonight deals with the thinking of God. In the scriptures of the Bible, uh, it reads, My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Mine are from above, while yours are from beneath. Here, God is saying to the people, you don't think like I think, and your ways are not like my ways. My ways are above and yours are from beneath. If God's ways are above and God's thoughts are above and ours are beneath, then there's a gulf between man and God. And as long as that gulf exists between man and God, man cannot ever be what God originally created him to be, which is in his own image and likeness. You can't be in the image and likeness of God in form and not in mind and spirit and thought. So if we are created to be in the image uh, from the scriptural or uh, biblical point of view, from the, uh, in the image and the likeness of God, then we are created with the capacity to be able to think like God. And therefore, if we can think like God, we can act like God. God's actions are godly and when a human being acts godly that means that human being is thinking on a higher level are we in agreement yes, sir. in the gospels matthew mark luke and john jesus never talks about God's thinking. He just says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can't get a people truly resurrected just by curtailing their actions. We have to get into the mind of the human being to elevate the thinking of people. Yes, and when people can think above, they will rise above. Clear? Yes, okay. So Jesus says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you think in your heart? The heart here is not the heart that the scripture is talking about. The heart that the scripture is talking about is the core of the person's being, thinking. That's the real heart. It is the essence of the individual. It is rational. It is intelligent. It is not emotional. When you think of the heart, you think of emotion. But to think like God, we have to be able to think above emotion. And that's what separates man from God and beast from man. Beast is moved by appetite. Man is controlled by emotion, but God is the master of the process of reasoning. 
So in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are taught that Islam is mathematics, and mathematics is Islam. The nation of Islam, according to our lessons, is all wise and does everything right and exact. We can't do things right and exact unless we do things mathematically. To do things mathematically is to do things with precision. When you do things emotionally, you throw away mathematics. And most of our decisions in life are made not from knowledge, but from feelings. Feeling. <laughs> Nothing more than feeling. If you haven't got nothing more than feelings, you're in bad shape. Children feel. Mature people think on the basis of knowledge, actual facts. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. You don't ask a person, what do you know? How do you feel? That shows you the level that we operate on. We operate on feelings, and that's why we're hurt so much, and we're all so bound up subjectively because we're moved by emotion. God has emotions, but he doesn't make decisions with emotions. God is so magnificently mathematical. He can plan long range. And the people get thrown off by the majesty of his mathematics. Because it does not have emotion involved. God has emotion, but he's not ruled by emotion. I'm going to prove this in, in a minute through our lessons and the teachings of the Bible and Quran. Jesus in the four Gospels doesn't talk about the mind of God. He just says, whatsoever the Father bids me to do, that I do. Whatsoever the Father causes me to speak, that I speak. He is a student of the Father, so he speaks the words of the Father, does the will of the Father. That's the way you start. You start to become like God by obeying him whether you understand or not. But you got to believe in God in order to obey him. You got to trust God in order to obey him. Because it's difficult for us to say we understand such a magnificent being as the Creator. I mean, please. We may never understand God. So it's not about you understanding God or me understanding Him. It is about our trusting and believing in Him enough that if He tells us, do this according to the word. We say we hear and we obey. And if we do that, that's the first stage of beginning to grow into the mind of God. Jesus, again in the gospel, starts talking like this. As he gets closer to the end, you notice him using the personal pronoun, I. At first, he's hiding his identity. Who do they say I am? Well, they say you're this, they say you're that, they say you're the other. But he's not telling the people who he is. He's hiding. Then all of a sudden, he gets very strong. He says, I am the vine, the true vine. 
My father is the husband. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. He's talking boldly now, but people are not understanding the transformation that is taking place in this human being. He has grown from just obedience to God. Now he becomes an actor carrying out God's will, not just from obedience, but from understanding the mind of God. Knowing God so well, he knows him in a hint. He knows him in a sign. He can just hear something and say, oh yeah, he means this, he means that. How do you get to the point where you know God so well that you know him in a hint? and you know him in a sign. There are some wives who study their husbands so well that he can just give a look and you know what the look means. Women do that more than men, brother. How many sisters know what I'm talking about? You, you know a person so well if they just give a certain look. You know what that look means. Nobody else may pick up on that, but you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't it be something to know God that well? That you could just hear something and say, oh, God is telling me such and such and so and so in this. How do you get like that? I don't know whether I've ever mentioned this to you, but I'm going to go through it very briefly. You know, in music, when you listen to great music, the symphonic music, the music of Beethoven, the music of Mozart, the music of Bach, the music of Tchaikovsky, you're listening to masters, composers, who lived and died hundreds of years ago, but they are as alive today in their music. Tchaikovsky's not here, but he lives. Beethoven is not here, but he lives. Who makes him live? It's the students who study his music. They not only study the notes that he wrote, they try to get into his head to find out what condition was he under when he composed this? What happened? What mood was he in? What happened in his life that was so traumatic that he went to his piano and he composed this? Then when you get in tune with his mood, you get in tune with his mind, then you read what he wrote then you are becoming one with him, then you can interpret his music and he lives through your baton as you interpret his score. Jesus became the master interpreter of God when he said, I and my father are one. He didn't have to say no more than that, just to say me and my dad we are one. It don't mean that when you, he's just one person. It means that we are so in tune now. His mind has become my mind. His will, my will. His thoughts, my thoughts. His ways, my ways. So it's no longer me you're looking at. You're looking at him whom you seek in me. I have become one with my father. My father in me and I in my father. So it ain't no more me. Me died. He lives in me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, now when you leave the gospels and get into the writings of the apostles, the apostles start giving us something about the mind of God that Jesus has become heir to. I'm coming to something. Just bear with me. 
Paul says, let this mind be in you. The same that was in Christ Jesus. Why didn't Jesus say that? Why did Paul say it and not Jesus? Because Jesus was growing into the mind of God. When Jesus became Christ, he was already in the mind of God. When Peter said, I know who you are, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, don't tell nobody. Why not tell anybody? Because it's not yet so. I have not yet ascended to my father. Meaning that's my position, all right, but I haven't gotten it yet. I'm not yet the powerful man that I'm going to be, so don't call me by that title yet. But when I become Jesus the Christ, I will have the power to crush my enemies. He didn't have the power when he went to the cross, but after he ascended to the Father, they said they saw him coming in the clouds of heaven, having great power. He wasn't the same man no more. When he comes back, he's not the same as when he left. When he comes back, he's in the mind of God. That means he got the power of God. And the scripture said, God put everything under Jesus, but he himself, all powers were turned over to him. Why? Because he had grown into the thinking the mind of God. So they say he sits at the right hand of God. What does that mean? Oh, can I get near your right hand, brother? God, where's your right hand? I need to get near your right hand. No, come on. The right hand is the hand that executes the power of the mind. As Jesus is the right hand of God, it means he's the executor of God's will. And that's why Jesus is said to be the one to bring about the judgment. God directs him, but Jesus does it. He's powerful enough to judge everything, the quick and the dead. Ooh, that's something. Now, 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 wait a minute, Paul. Let's come back over here a minute, Paul. And tell us, what are you talking about? Let this mind be in you the same that was in Christ Jesus. Who are you talking to, Paul? He's talking to the followers of Jesus Christ. But they're, they're babies now. They're immature now. But he's saying to them, look, permit yourself to grow into the mind of Christ. Well, what mind did he grow into? God's mind. Then if you got God's mind in you, who are you? Who are you? You become God. You become agents of God and God. If your mind is God's mind, then you think like God, you act like God, you're doing the will of God. So the whole earth is filled with God. So we become gods. Ye are all gods, children of the most high God. This is why the white man don't want you to come near the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because, thank you. Because he knows you think like him. He's the real devil. He's your teacher. So you think like your master. So you do like white folks. So God can say to you, uh-huh, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Mine are from above, yours are from beneath. Why are your thoughts from beneath? Because you let an enemy shape your mind. Yes. You let a devil shape your yes. mind. So if the white man is your educator, your teacher, and your trainer, you don't think like God, you think like the one who taught you. And it is only when you come into God's classroom yes. 
and become a student of God's that you can grow into God. And that's why Jesus said, except you become. As a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. See, you've been grown up already. Grown up under who? Under your enemy. So you think like your enemy. So the only way you can come to God, now don't come with no hang up. Don't come with no uh, 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 bargain. There ain't no bargain, man. You don't make no bargain here. God, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. Uh-uh, baby. You ain't got a damn thing to say to God like that. He don't, you don't have nothing that he wants. This is no negotiating table. Huh? Excuse me for saying it like that. I don't mean any disrespect. But you don't bring nothing to God. When we come to him, what do we have to negotiate with? You do this for me, I do that for you. No, the white man has so fixed us, brother, That's right. that we don't hardly have anything to give but our worthless selves. And God said, if you just turn your worthless self over to me yes, sir. and become like a little child, yes. I will make you yes. into yourself again. What is yourself? Yourself is what I made you in the beginning. I made you in my image. I made you in my likeness. I didn't make a nigger. I didn't make a boy. I didn't make a colored fella, a negro, a pimp, a hustler. God said, let us make man. And when he made a man, brother, he made the man into him. But what did the white man say? Let us make a nigger. That's right. And he made niggers. Right. And the nigger is his product. This is not what God made. This is what the white man made. But blessed be Allah, you got a chance now to come out from yes, under the white man and come back to God and let him remake you. Yes, but in order to remake you, you got to come as a little child. Don't tell me what you know. What do you know? Come on. Oh, I have my... <laughs> My doctorate degree, I have my master's degree. <laughs> I've matriculated a... <laughs> yeah, we all did, brother. That's the game. To make you think you really know what we don't know. So we come to God proud and arrogant. But Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of God. Let this mind be in you. The same that was in Christ Jesus. Man, that's heavy. 